This is problem 3.13 from the text. Um, I'm going to solve this problem using two different techniques. The first technique is um, I'm going to try to answer the question I want to find out V2. So I know that if I want to write the nodal equation for V2, what would best suit me is if I had current currents come if I knew the currents coming into and leaving out of V2. Right now I could do a simple source transformation look at the voltage source with a 10 ohm resistance connected to it so I can redraw the circuit by doing a source transformation whereby I write this circuit I redraw the circuit has here is my current source with a 10 ohm resistance and this current source now has a current value of the 2 volts divided by 8 amps. So all I'm really doing is I am redrawing the circuit where this current source followed by I'm sorry voltage source followed by a res series resistance is being written as this now the question is what is the direction of this current the direction of this current has to be the same so the positive is facing towards the ground so the direction of the current has to be that and if you um, recall our source transformation again the source transformation always does the same thing we have a, a resistance in series with that this is transformed to a current source with a resistance in series followed by that so that's an R this is V so that's still an R but this is this I is equal to so the I here is equal to V over R that's exactly what we are doing so that's a little side note as far as source transformation so now we have our point V2 and then we still have our 4 ohm resistance and a 3 amp current source and that is our ground. So now I can write the equation for node 2, the KCL equation. So the KCL equation for node 2 is going to be my currents coming in are these this is the only current coming in this is this direction that direction and so now we have v2 by 10 plus v2 by 4 plus this current is also leaving which is 2 by 8 which is oh I'm sorry that has to be 2 by because we replace the voltage source it with a resistance in that's 10 in series so this is going to be 1 over 5 equals 3 so this tells me that 14 V2 by 40 equals 3 minus 1 by 5 which is 14 by 5 that's 15 minus 1 14 by 5 which means V2 equals 40 by 5 which is 8 volts so now that I know what V2 is, I want to find out what V1 is. V1 is nothing but the voltage drop across the 
8 ohm resistance and but I don't in order to find that if I knew what the current here is if the current here which is I if I knew what that current was then I could find out exactly what the voltage across uh, voltage drop across that would be because that would simply tell me the voltage across that is 8 I times 8 or I R the current through it times the times the resistance of it is the voltage drop across it so now how do I find out what I is now there's a couple of ways to find out what I is now one simple way to see what I is is I is this current going here which is going to be the sum of these two currents right so but how do we know what the sum of these two currents is well we know what V2 is so V2 is 8 so it's going to be 8 divided by 10 plus 2 divided by 10 should be my I because that's this I here is exactly the same as that I here that's one way to do it and the other way to do it is also and we'll look at the other way to do it in just a second first let's solve this so this tells me that this is 10 over 10 which is 1 amp so if I know that I is 10 amps then V1 is going to be 8 times 1 which is 8 volts also now here's an alternate way of asking what finding out what I is well I is if you look at look at this point V2 the voltage drop from V V2 so if I if I if I find out if I want to find out what I, I is I is given by V2 plus 2 divided by 10 and how am I saying this because I'm saying this because I can think of this there's a vo the voltage at this point is V2 there's of uh, voltage of 2 here so that's V1 plus 2 so and that's the net voltage ec from from this point to this point and then the resistance across that is 2 plus 8 and so that gives me a V2 plus 2 by 10 which also tells me that that is 8 plus 2 by 10 which is 1 amp and now substituting that into this equation still gives me the same answer now often there's a confusion as to why I did V2 plus 2 and not V2 minus 2 what made me add those two voltages well here's a here's a way to see this here are some general observations we should make and we made these in passing in class so when we are looking at two let's take all possible scenarios let's say we have two current sources I1 and I2 so this is I1 and I2 and they're in series they're in parallel so this gives me an equivalent which is a single current source that is has a value of I1 plus I2 now I can also say if I have a a voltage source plus minus in series with another voltage source plus minus then this is equivalent to so let's say this was V1 and this was V2 then this is equivalent to uh, the same two points with a voltage source with plus minus of V1 plus V2 and that's essentially what I was doing here if you think of V2 as being the voltage at this point and which is a positive value 
we know that this is positive because it's it's the node voltage here there's a drop here and so this is a positive va positive polarity so I see that this positive is connected to the negative just like here the positive is connected to the negative so the essentially the drop this can be thought of as a single voltage that is um, that is V V2 plus 2 and so V2 plus 2 is the voltage here as far as this path down to this to the ground is concerned now V2 is the voltage here at this point with respect to this so if you think of this node let's say you think of this as whole thing as one node then the voltage of this node is V2 plus 2 so that's exactly what we are doing when we said V2 by 2 divided by 10 10 is the current through this particular p branch so that's where that equation came from now if if our polarities were to change so for example let's see other scenarios here so this is these are two of my scenarios and here's another scenario let's say my uh, voltage sources were again connected in series but this is m plus minus and this is a minus plus and this is v1 this is v2 now this is going to give me an equivalent which is again I'm still referring to the same points A and B A and B if you will but now I have a voltage source where this is plus minus let's say then it's going to be of value V1 plus V2 alternatively I could also have written this as a plus minus with a magnitude of V2 sorry V2 V1 minus V2 or this is going to be V2 minus V1 so these are alternate views of the same thing now by the same token then if I have a current source here which is pointing up and a current source here which is pointing down and this was I1 this was I2 then this is equivalent to a single current source now I could say it's a single current source pointing up with a value that is I1 minus I2 or it's also equivalent to a single current source pointing down with a mag current value of I2 minus I1 so we kind of covered a bunch of concepts in this simple example uh, but the primary goal was simply to find out what V1 was and V2 was.